شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله ولا علي العظيم حسم الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير نعم المولى ونعم النصير رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل أقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي جعل الحمد مفتاحا لذكره وسببا للمزيد من فضله ودليلا على آلائه وعظمته ثم الصلاة والسلام وتحية والإكرام على النبي الأمي المكي المدني الهاشمي الذي سمي في السماوات بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته الأطيبين الأطهرين سيما أولهم أمير المؤمنين وآخرهم مقية الله في الأرضين روحي وأرواه العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء ورحمة الله على محبيهم ومواليهم وشيعتهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم وغاسب حقوقهم ومنكري فضائلهم ملعنين أما بعد قال المعصوم عليه السلام يا ابن الشبيب إن كنت باقيا للشيء فابكي للحسين فإنه زبها كما يذبه الكبش For the happiness of Hazrat Zahra and Marzia For the enlightenment of the graves of Yawm Al-Humin Of the graves of the Shuhada Ulema and Siddiqeen For the safety of the followers of Ahlul Bayt around the world And for the safety and the hastening of the reappearance of Hazrat Baqiyatillah Al-A'adham Arwahun Al-Fida Please recite your loudest salawat. I'm sure you can do better than that. I'll take it. All praise you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One who is Ahman and one who is Ahim. The night of the first of Muharram has set in and both the Mulk and the Malakut, their energy has changed to one of mourning, to one of remembrance of Abi Abdullah. These nights that you are about to embark upon are no ordinary nights. When in Surah Al-Fajr, Allah says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَانِ الْعَشْرِ And by the dawn, and by those ten nights, Mufassirin have said, these ten nights, one of the interpretations could be the last ten nights of the holy month of Ramadan or the first ten nights of the month of the Hijjah or then the first ten nights of the holy month of Ramadan uh, Muharram Afwan the first ten nights of the holy month of Muharram by the breaking of the dawn on the 10th of this month there was a dawn that broke that was like none other such by the time that it reached Asr everything in existence was weeping for Abi Abdullah the sky 
the earth, the angels of the heavens and the earth, all were in a state of the remembrance of Imam al Hussein. Each year, we come to these nights, and each year, we come to renew that covenant with Abu Abdullah. The covenant that we will answer your call. In the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein, those of you that have been to Karbala and those of you that have not, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. In that ziyarah, there is a certain protocol in the way one approaches the dharih of Sayyidu Shahada. That protocol, according to Imam al Sadiq, salawatullah wa salam, hu alayhi. He says that walk a few steps towards the haram, towards the dharih, and then stop and recite Allahu Akbar seven times. Then recite La ilaha illallah seven times. Praise Allah, alhamdulillah seven times. Subhanallah seven times. Why is it that this is said to do this will explain possibly tomorrow night in more detail but more so that it removes the hijab much like the takbir it's recommended seven times before you start your salah to do seven takbir before your takbiratul ihram why because these seven takbirat they remove the curtains, the curtains of inattentiveness between you and the beloved. And so these adhkar that are given to be recited in the haram of Abi Abdullah are that one removes the curtains of the ma'rifah, the curtains from the ma'rifah of Imam al Hussein. After doing that, the Imam says, then go forward a few more steps. And say the following, لَبَيْكْ يَا دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ I'm answering your call, O oh, the one that called towards Allah. إِنْ كَانَ لَنْ يَجِبْكَ بَدَنِي عِنْدَ إِسْتِغَافَتِكَ Even though my body was not there at the time when you called out حَلْ مِنْ نَاصِلٍ يَنْصُرُنَا even though I wasn't present in the land of Karbala at that moment, فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ But I'm answering you now. فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي With my heart, I'm replying to you. I've come to your ziyara. I wasn't there in the plains of Karbala. But today I stand and I answer your call with my heart. Wasami with my ears. Wabasari with my eyes. Wara'i with my views. What does it mean answering the call of Abi Abdullah with my heart? I should look within my heart. Is there anything else that dwells in there but Allah and Ahlul Bayt? Because the love of Ahlul Bayt is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, and he has not placed two hearts in the chest of a person. Where is my heart inclined? The same, say the Zainab, she said, one day she was 
three or four years old and she was sitting in the lap of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And she says to her father, Ya Abba, do you love me? Imam Ali says, yes, I love you, my daughter. You are my daughter. You are part of me. She says, Father, do you love Allah? And Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Yes, of course I love Allah. So then she recites this ayah of the Qur'an, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجْلٌ قَلْبَيْنْ فِي جَوْتِهِ We have not placed two hearts in the chest of an individual. Father, how is it that you can love me and love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Amir al-Mu'mineen holds his daughter, kisses her head, says, My daughter, my whole heart is filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I only love you for the sake of Allah. فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي What is the level of my love for Imam al Hussein? Am I willing to adjust my wants and my desires to be around the wants and the desires of my mawla? Or is it, it's cool for a holiday to go ziyarah. It's okay for ten nights. And I'll, you know, make a somewhat effort to appear Muslim but outside of that you couldn't tell me from a non-Muslim let alone a non-Shia فَقَدْ أَجَابَكَ قَلْبِي وَالسَّلِعِي and with my ears are oh, my ears the ears that Hussein would love. I do these ears listen to riba or and music, listen to backbiting and tahma and enjoy it, enjoy it. That's the worst. That's the height of degradation. Where one person knowing that riba is wrong, but enjoys listening to it, like the gossip, feels good. I like to hear what people say. And you know, <laughs> the absolute height of degradation is what? I know riba is haram, and I know to speaking about other people is haram, and I know that hearing riba is haram. But the height of my spiritual disease is this. Even when someone comes to me to ask for Forgiveness, because the only way you can be forgiven for doing riba against someone is that you go to the person and you say, I'm really sorry, but I may have said something about you. I may have done some riba about you, or I may have heard some riba about you. Forgive me. Only when that person forgives you will Allah forgive you. Yom al Qayyamah, many people will be stopped from entering into heaven. They'll have ziyarat, they'll have hajj, they'll have salah. But when they are about to enter into Jannah, they'll stop them and say, wait. This person did the ghibah of someone. Give all the a'mal that way. But the height of the disease for us is this. That when someone comes to me and says, look, I'm really sorry, I may have been party to Riba about you, and so I'm asking for your forgiveness. The first question I ask is, oh yeah, what did you hear? Because I'm, I'm so much in love with that Riba. I even listen to my own Riba as well. So I'm like, oh, what did you hear? Oh yeah. Who said it? <laughs> and then I just add a riba on top of the riba. Because telling someone who said what about you is riba as well. What about my ears? Are they ears that have dedicated themselves to Abi Abdullah? And my eyes 
are my eyes, eyes that gaze only upon that which my master would be pleased with. Or are they eyes that gaze upon that which is haram? Warai and my views are my views in line with my master. Or are my views at polar opposites with my master? Where Imam al Hussein is saying one thing and doing one thing. I'm doing the opposite and then I just come to Majlis and think, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a mu'min, I'm a shi'a, whatever. But, you know, Imam Hussein is saying this, no, that doesn't, that part of the religion, uh, it's a bit difficult. I don't like that. You know, waking up Fajr is a bit of a pain. Wearing hijab ruins my hairstyle. You know, uh, so about, you know, like the, on polar opposites with each other. But at the same time, it comes with responsibility. We're saying, Allahumma hajjil waliyyik and faraj. Let it not be the case that the Imam comes and he has to turn away from us because of the way that we're dressed or the way that we're acting or the way that we conduct ourselves. How destructive would that be that a person has their imam turn his face away from them? Labaik da i Allah. Imam Hussein invited people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to prepare for this journey of love. For this saga of love to unfold upon you, you must be ready. If you attend just to tick a box, then you will not uncover those secrets that are hidden here. In the Majlis of Abu Abdullah, you can raise your spiritual station. But it requires a purified heart to be able to perceive that which is there. Does tonight feel like any other night to me? Barring the fact that I'm wearing black, barring the fact that I'm coming to a majlis. But in the air, do I feel the heaviness? Is my heart heavy? If it's not, then there's something wrong. My heart has lost that ability to perceive the changes in this realm. The heart, the Urafa say, Al Qalbu Yataraddu Bain al Mulki wal Malakut. Your heart is the door that connects you. From, the, from this world, connects this world to the angelic realms, to the malakut, the immaterial realm, the realm you go to when you sleep, the dreams that you see. There is a reality to some of them. And that immaterial realm, that barzakhi realm that you enter into. See, when you're younger, you dream a lot. But as you get older, those dreams seem to reduce. To the point that I get to a point where I, I, I don't dream at all anymore. And that's because this heart has been rusted. And that entrance into the Malakut has been restricted. This is only the pure heart that meets the heart. It is only the pure heart that can enter the realm of the Malakut. But these Majalis are such that they will purify that rusted heart quicker 
than any other thing. How? Let me explain. Rayyan ibn Shabib comes to visit Imam al Rada salawatullah wa salam hu There are more people in the hall and the salawat is quieter. How does that work? <laughs> Some people are looking at me adamant like, I am not going to recite this salawat. I don't care how many thawab I'm going to get to hell with you. Oh. You're missing out. Believe me, you're missing out. If you understood the fadila of this salawat, it would be the only dhikr that you do in your life. Anyhow, Rayyan ibn Shabib, he comes to Imam al on the first of Muharram. Imam says to him, Ibn Shabib, do you know what day it is today? Did you fast today? This is for tomorrow as well, for each of you. Did you fast on this day? He says, no, Imam. Imam says to him, do you know that this is the day that Nabi Zakaria fasted. Nabi Zakaria fasted. There's two reasons why Zakaria alayhi salam fasted on the first day of Muharram. One was that he saw Hazrat Maryam was receiving food for her servitude from heaven when she would do her i'tiqaf in the masjid. Zakaria alayhi salam would go and he would see her and would see that she had food in front of her. And he would ask her, where did you get this food from Maryam? She would say, the angels have brought it for me from heaven. So Zakaria alayhi salam also wanted to achieve that and so he fasted. The second reason that we have, and this is in Khafa'is al husayniyah of Shaykh Ja'far Shushtari. He says that Zakaria alayhi salam, and this is narrated from the Imam of our time. So Zakaria alayhi salam asked him to teach, asked Allah to teach him the names of the five that had been taught to Adam alayhi salam had been taught to Adam alayhi salam. So Jibra'een came down and taught him the names, the five names of the Panjshan. And Zakaria alayhi salam began reciting them. A short while later, Zakaria, he asks Allah, he says, Ya Allah, I don't know what it is. When I recite the name of Muhammad, my heart becomes happy. And when I recite the name of Ali, my heart becomes happy. And when I recite the name of Fatima, my heart becomes happy. And the name of Hassan, and my heart becomes happy. But Ya Allah, when I recite this name of Hussein, my heart can't bear it. Who is this Hussein? What is this Hussein? Allah reveals to him Kaf Ha Ya Ain Sad. The start of Surah Tamariya. This kaf says Zakaria kaf stands for Karbala. Ha stands for halak, death. Ya Yazid, Ain Atash, Sad Sadr. And then Allah revealed unto Zakaria the story of Abi Abdullah that there shall be a grandson of Rasulullah, who will be called his son. And he will come to a land called Karbala, and there he will be martyred. 
his children, the youth, all martyred alongside him. Three days he will be kept thirsty, his head severed from his body, paraded through the streets and placed in front of the despot tyrant. Zechariah alayhi salam begins crying. For three days Zechariah locks himself away in the masjid and cries for three days. After three days of crying, Zechariah raises his hand. He says, Oh Allah, bless me with a son that I will love like the final prophet shall love Hussein. Bless me with a son that will also face the trials of Hussein so I can face and feel the pain of the final prophet. And so the Qur'an says, and we blessed him with a child. And we told him, Zakariyah, name him Yahya. None has received this name before him. There are multiple similarities between Hazrat Yahya and Imam al Hussein. And Imam Hussein makes reference to Hazrat Yahya as well. Both of them were born after a pregnancy term of six months. Both of their names were selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Both of them were killed and their heads severed and presented to the despot tyrant of their time. Then Imam says to Rayyan ibn Shabib, he says, Yabn Shabib, if you were to do the same thing tomorrow, i.e. on the first day of Muharram, if you were to fast for you, if you fast tomorrow and you ask for whatever you want, for the sake of Imam al Hussein, Allah will grant it to you. It is one of the most powerful a'mal to fast tomorrow, the first day of the holy month of Muharram. Imam continues, Imam listens. Six things for Rayyan ibn Shabib as a preparation for the month of Muharram. Says to Ibn Shabib, In kunta baqiyan lishay, fabkil al Hussein, fa innahu dhubha kama yudhbahu al Kabsh. Says, O oh son of Shabib, if you have some sort of pain in your life you've suffered some sort of loss you feel like you're going to cry something has gone wrong in your life your heart is broken says in kunta baki al you feel like crying for something فَبْكِنْ Hussein, Cry over Abu Abdullah. فَإِنَّهُ ذُبِهَا كَمَا يُذْبَهُ الْكَبْشِ For he was slaughtered in the way that the sheep are slaughtered. Hussein is the imam of the broken hearted. Those that have pain in their life. Those whose hearts have been broken. You bring it to the door of Abi Abdullah. And Abu Abdullah will heal those hearts. Hussein will heal the hearts of all. Then Imam Wukutila Ma'ahu min Ahli Baytihi Samaniya to Asha Rajula. And with him, 18 of the members of his family were killed. ما لهم في الأرض شبيهون ولقد بكت السماوات السبع والأرضون لقتله says O son of Shabib with him 18 members of his family were killed the likes of which this world has never seen and for them cried the seven heavens and the earth Buka upon Imam al Hussein will purify your hearts quicker than anything. Buka means to cry loudly. 
If I can't cry loudly, then at least shed a tear. This will consume my sins. The fact that we can't cry, that we don't shed a tear, that we're not attentive to the Masaib of Imam al Hussein, that I don't feel the Masaib of Imam al Hussein, is down to the darkness in my heart. There are two reasons that that darkness comes, amongst others. One is sin, the second is the consumption of haram. Imam al Hussein in Karbala, he stood. In front of them said, I am standing in front of you. You know I am the son of Rasulullah. You know that I am the son of Zahra. You know what my maqam is. Why is it that you want to kill me so much? And then he turned around and said to them, The reason for it is, Because your stomachs have been filled with haram. They were Muslims. What haram had they been eating? It was because they took money from Ibn Ziyad and Yazid. And with that they bought food and they consumed it. How pure is my money? How clean is my money? I tell someone that this job will take me three hours and I charge them for three hours. But I complete the job in half an hour, and I knew from the start I'd finish it in half an hour. But I charge him the full three hours. I lied. Half an hour was halal, two and a half hours haram. I earn enough, but I tell Her Majesty's government that I'm only working 12 hours a week so that they can top me up with whatever universal credit I can get. Top-ups haram. Buy food with it, consume it, end up in the army of Yazid. It's as simple as that. Be willing to kill the hujjah of your time. The heart that is dirtied, and sometimes it's not even the fault of the children, it's what we feed them, right? But we create a whole nation that is ready to kill the hujjah through our greed. Through our greed. Crying for Imam al Hussein will purify your heart. And if you can't wail, you can't cry loudly for whatever reason it may be. Some people are ashamed of others. See, the thing is that if I was to, if, if the door of heaven was to be presented here and we were told, right, there you go, in you go, this is heaven. You can't deny it. But the only thing is that you need to be able to wail and cry for Imam al Hussein. Then I wouldn't be embarrassed by anyone around me because I'd be like, forget you lot, I'm going. And then I cry loudly. But I... But I won't do that. Two reasons. One, I'm embarrassed to people. And number two, I don't have yaqeen in what's being said. I don't have certainty. And that's the reality of it. I haven't achieved certainty. But if I can't wail, then cry. Especially for my younger brothers. If I can't wail, I can't cry. Just at least some tears. Because one tear for Imam al Hussein will form a barrier between you and the fire of hell. Even one tear. Equivalent, the fifth Imam says, to a mosquito's wing. If it falls from your eye from Imam al- for Imam al Hussein, Allah will forgive all of your sins. But it goes even further because Hussein is that Kareem Imam that even if you can't cry for him, your heart has been so damaged that you can't cry for Imam al Hussein, then they say, do tabaki. What is tabaki? Tabaki is appear as if you are crying. Lower your head in the masaib of Imam al Hussein. If you do that out of respect of Imam al Hussein and the masaib that is being recited, they say that your sins will be forgiven as well. Because you have gained the ma'rifah of the Imam. 
Wail, if you can't, shed a tear, you can't, lower your head. These are all forms of the Allah of Imam al Hussein. Right now it has become such a culture that we don't give any importance to Azadari. Oh, no, 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 Azadari is for the other lot. We don't do no matter. This is what Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam would do. This is what the, uh, the holy household would do. Imam al-Sadiq would hold, hold majlis in his house. And he would call shu'ara, he would call people, and they would cry over Imam al Hussein. And now I think I'm too good for that. The moment Masai finishes, people run. Oh, Matam Dan, run out of here. Aizan, be very, very careful. Be very careful that you do not disrespect the Imam of our time by leaving the Azar of his grandfather. Our hearts become lost. Understand the importance of this Azadari. Understand the importance of crying and doing matam and reciting poetry for Imam al Hussein. For even one line of poetry that you write in the honor of Imam al Hussein may just be your ticket into heaven. Because in the Hussein Babun min Abwa bil Jannah. Hell has seven doors. Heaven has eight. The name of the eighth door is Babun Hussein. That is the door where those that attended the majlis of Imam al Hussein will enter into heaven. Those that served in the majlis of Imam al Hussein, those that helped clean, those that volunteered, those that came and attended, that door is reserved for the azadar of Imam al Hussein. For those that are the zakirin of Imam al Hussein. Do not look down upon the azar of Imam al Hussein. There is no great alim, no great arif that has passed. All of them say the same thing. If you want to achieve any sort of maqam in your spirituality, then the azadari of Imam al Hussein is important. The azar of Sayyid al Shahada is important. The second thing. The Imam says to Rayyan ibn Shabib, he says, Ya ibn Shabib, in bakayta ala al-Husayn, hatta tasira damu'ak ala khaddaik, says, if you cry for Imam al-Husayn to the extent that the tears from your eyes wet your cheeks, غفر الله لك كل ذنب أذنبته. Allah will forgive every single one of your sins that you have ever committed. Sariran kana o kabira. The small and all and the large ones. Aleelan kana o kathira. Even if they are few or they are multiple in number, you cry for Imam al Hussein to the extent that your cheeks become wet. Allah will forgive every single one of those sins. Then the Imam says, Yabn al-Shabib, in sarraka, in sarraka, an talqa Allah azza wa jal wa la dhamba alayk. Yabn al-Shabib, if you want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the state that you have no sins, written in your scroll of deeds, Fazur al Hussein. then go for the ziyarat of Imam al Hussein. Recite the ziyarat of Imam al Hussein. Those that can't go, those that can't go, from afar, send your salams to Abi Abdullah. They say there was an individual, one of the ulama, he died and one of his close friends saw him in his dream. And said to him, tell me, how is the barzakh for you? 
Because you know your loved ones who die, you can see them. The barzakh is just, it's just here. It's parallel to us. You just need the eyes to see it. But many a times those from the barzakh are given permission to return. Thursday nights. Not every Thursday. Some will be allowed every Thursday. But others once a year, once a month. Based upon the level that they have with Allah, they'll be allowed out in order to come and visit their family members. Or then you can see them in dreams and there are a'mal to see them in your dreams. Those who are interested can ask me afterwards. Anyway, he saw this individual in his dream and he said, tell me, how is your barzakh? He says, oh, very hard. Very hard. He says, is there anything that I can do for you to help you through this difficult time? He says, if you can hold the majlis of Imam al Hussein for me, it would greatly benefit me. So he says, so I went in for 10 days, I held the majlis of Imam al Hussein. I held the majlis of Imam al Hussein. So after 10 days, I saw this person in my dream again. And I, and I saw that he was in ease, sitting in a garden. And I said to him, Did the majlis work? He says, yes, that helped me somewhat. But he says, this state that you find me in wasn't because of those majalis that you did on my behalf. He says, then what happened? He says, I don't know. There was this lady that was brought into this Qabristan and buried here yesterday. And through the barakah of her body being buried here, all of us in this area were blessed with this maqam. Says, who is she? Says, I don't know who she is. All I know is that three times a day, Imam al Hussein himself comes to visit her. Imam al Hussein three times a day comes to do her ziyarah. This individual says, I left, I woke up, and I went to inquire who was this lady. I asked around, and they said, Yes, there was a lady buried here. Her husband lives in this particular place. So he says, I went to the house, saw a simple house. I went inside, I offered my condolences, and I said to him, I told him about the dream. I said, was your wife an alima? He said, no. Was she an arifa? Was she someone that had, the, had achieved maqamat in the levels of irfan? He says, no. So did she study? Did she go to the house? And did she do something? Was there a special amal that she would do? He says, no, she was just normal. She was a housewife. We've been married for this many years. She was you know, nothing uh, particular about her that you're asking. He says, is there anything that she used to do that has given her this maqam? He says, yes, there is only one thing that I remember from the moment that I've been married to her until now. And that is that we never had money to go to Karbala. But she always desired to go for the ziyarat of Imam al Hussein, but we never had the finances to do so. So what my wife would do is every single day she would go on the roof of the house, she would turn towards Karbala and she would just say, As-salamu alayka ya ala Abdullah. And because of this, Hussein comes for her ziyarat three times a day. What kareem imams you have. But you just saying as salam to them. And they say that we will come to your ziyara at multiple occasions. In the mawt, at the time of your death, we will be there. In the hisab, we will be there with you when your accounting is taking place. In the sirat, and we will be there to guide you across the sirat. Do not consider these majalis to be something small. 
from tomorrow begin reciting Ziyarat Ashura, at least until the day of Ashura. Recite that Ziyarat Ashura and see what it does for you. Imam says, Yabn Shabib, in Sarraka and Teskunu, Gurafil, Mabni, Tifil Jenna, Ma'an Nabi, Wa Ali, O son of Shabib, if you want a house in heaven, Next to the Prophet and his Al, Fal'an Qatalat al Hussein. Send La'na on those that killed Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Then he says, Yabna Shabib in Sarraka and Yakuna Lekam in a Thawab, Mithlum Lamanish Tushida Ma'al Hussein. Yabna Shabib, if you want the reward. Of, as if you had died at the feet of Imam al Hussein in Karbala, then every often say, Ya laytani kuntu ma'ahum fa fawzan adhina. How I wish I was there with you, and I would have given my life to you. So you will be given the reward of those that died, Shaheed. In Karbala next to Imam. Yabna Shabib in Sarraka and Takuna Ma'ana fid Darajat il Ula min al Jinan. O son of Shabib, if you want to be with us in the highest heights of the heavens, Fahzun li Huznina, Wafrah li Farhina. Says, if you want to be with us in the heights of heaven, then be sad when we are sad, and be happy when we are happy. And I urge you to follow our wilaya properly. Follow what we want from you, not what your desires tell you to do. Follow what we want from you, not what you think you should be doing. Submit yourself to the Imam and towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, there is no salvation. وَعَلَيْكَ بِوِلَايَتِنَا And then the Imam says, فَلَوْ أَنَّ رَجْلٌ أَحَبَّ حَجَرٍ لَحَشَرَحُ اللَّهُ مَعَهُ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ for indeed, if an individual was to even love a stone, Allah will raise that person with that stone on the day of judgment. Love Ali Muhammad. And the test of love is this, that do I do what they want from me? Do I obey what they want from me? Or do I think, no, I know better. It makes a better Instagram selfie if I am wearing this type of clothing. Even though my Imam and my God will be upset. He says, if you want to be with us, then be happy when we are happy. And be sad when we are sad. Show the signs of that sadness. I said to you, Bukha, if you can't wail and cry, then shed tears. If your heart won't allow you to shed a tear, then at least lower your head for the Masa'ib of Abu Abdullah. Fahzun li huznina. Be sad when we are sad. The first night of Muharram has set in. Imam al Hussein gave many sacrifices. Yesterday we said that the first sacrifice was Medina. And there were many shahada in Karbala. <coughs> there were some that even occurred after Asri Ashur on the 11th of Muharram. People like Hafhaf ibn Muhannad who reached the land of Karbala too late. And so on the 11th of Muharram was martyred as the women were being taken captive. And then there are those that were killed before Karbala. The first Safir of Imam Hussein to the land of Basra, 
to the city of Basra, Sulaiman, was killed by Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad Mal'un. And then there is one that was so fondly remembered by Imam al Hussein that when he sent him to Kufa, he said to them that I am sending to you my brother min and the one from my Ahl al-Bayt that I have total trust upon Muslim ibn Aqil. Muslim remembered Imam al Hussein till his last breath. When they took him to Dar al Imara, to the roof of the palace, Muslim ibn Aqil began to cry. And they said to him, Muslim, we heard that you are one of the lions of Bani Hashim. It does not befit you to cry. He turned to them and said that I don't cry out of fear of death. I cry because I have told my master, Abu Abdullah, to come to Kufa. And he's coming with his children and his daughters and the women folk of Al Muhammad. One of the will of the parts of the will of Muslim was this: write a letter to Imam Al Hussein and tell him not to come. The people of Kufa have turned their back on him. Muslim Ibn Aqil remembered Imam Al Hussein at his last moment, and Imam Al Hussein doesn't keep anyone's debt. In his own last moments. He also remembered Muslim ibn Aqil. After his Abbas had died, his Ali Asghar had been killed, his Akbar had been mutilated, and his Ali Asghar was buried. When he rode out into the battlefield, covered in the blood of his loved ones, covered in his own blood, Imam al Hussein began fighting. And at one moment he stopped and called out, Ya Muslim ibn Aqil, Ya Ali ibn Arwah, Ya Habib ibn Marahir, Ya Abtal al-Safa, Ya Fursan al-Ija, Ma yunadikum fala tujibun, O Muslim ibn Aqil, O Ali ibn Arwah, O Habib ibn Marahir, O my loyal soldiers, where are you today? Hussein calls you, why do you not reply to him? Abu Abdullah remembered them on that day. Muslims' death, I often say that Muslim ibn Aqil, you were so lucky that your death resembled the death of Abi Abdullah. <laughs> Muslim was thirsty when they took him to the roof of the palace. Abi Abdullah was thirsty as he lay on the ground of Karbala. Muslim's head was severed from his body while he was alive. There are only three people in the Karbala narrative where the word of Zirah has been used, slaughtered, because Zirah is one, an individual is still alive and his head is being removed from his body. Those three individuals were who? Muslim ibn Aqil, the second is Imam al Hussein, and the third is the six month old child of Abi Abdullah, Mabuhim min al Ibn al Ibn slaughtered from ear to ear. Muslim's head was severed from his body, Abu Abdullah's head was severed from his body. And they took the body of Muslim ibn Aqil and they threw it from the roof of the palace to the earth of Kufa. And they tied ropes around the feet of Muslim. And they tied the rope to the horses. And they dragged the body of Muslim through the streets of Kufa. Muslim's body was mutilated after his death. And Abdullah's headless body lay on the ground of Kerbala. And those individuals, they came to Omar ibn Sa'ad when they were asking for heads of Bani Hashim. They said, Mahnur is we were the ones that suffered the bones of the chest of Hussein under the feet of our horses. They ran their horses over the body of the man of Hussein, mutilating it, separating his limbs from his body. Muslim, your death was like that of Allah, Abdullah. You were killed thirsty. Your head was removed from your body. Your body was mutilated. 
لعنت الله على القوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أيهم قلب ينقلبون إنا لله وإنا إليه الراجعون يا الله for the sake of these tears Ya Allah, forgive our sins. Ya Allah, for the sake of these tears for Imam al Hussein, forgive the sins of our parents. Ya Allah, those of our parents that are alive, give them long lives. Those of our parents that have left this world, give them a place next to Ali Muhammad in Jannah. Oh Allah, those who are ill, give them shifa. Oh Allah, there is a specific dua for someone that is ill, a young boy, seven years old, Sayyid Mukhtar, who's been diagnosed with a brainstem tumor. Ya Allah, for the sake of these nights, and for the sake of Imam al Hussein, give him shifaya ajil wa kamil. Oh Allah, those who are in debt, clear their debts. Ya Allah, Give us tawfiq to be amongst the zawar of Imam al Hussein. Allow these eyes to cast one more time upon the dariq of Imam al Hussein. Ya Allah, give us tawfiq for hajj and umrah. Ilahi, I don't know what difficulties, what hajat, what problems those in attendance of this majlis have and what problems they're going through. But Ilahi, for the sake of the musibah of Imam al Hussein remove the sorrows and dispel the difficulties and accept the hajat of all those that are present in this majlis. Ya Allah, keep safe the azadar of Sayyidul Shahada around the world. Ya Allah, accept our small token of azar in this night and on the nights that are to come. Ya Allah, hasten the reappearance of Yusuf al Zahra and allow us to be amongst his true Muntadineen, his true writers, Matam al Hussein.